funny. Make sure you pick up your lab notebook when you come in. Yeah, grab your lab notebooks on the way. Been around the Bay Area my whole life. Grew up uh, in a small suburb near Berkeley. Um, went down to UC Santa Cruz, got my bachelor's in physics down there and also my master's in education. So I lived there for uh, six or seven years and been living in San Mateo, teaching physics and AP physics here at the high school ever since. So hopefully you picked up your lab notebooks on the way to the class. They were uh, great, as they were last time on average. Uh, some people even managed extra credit from the opportunities to get extra credit on the first two labs and just for going above and beyond and writing computers and stuff. Just so you know how it was graded, um, the Hot Wheels track lab was eight points, the Deck Lunch lab was with eight points, the Spring Lab was 12, and the Friction Lab was 10. And you'll find a score on each page, and then the combined total score out of 38 is on the Friction Lab, the last page of the Okay? So good job. work done by any force by plotting the force as a function of distance. And the area underneath that graph will be equal to the work done by that force. And so another way of understanding where this one half came from is it was the triangle, right? One half, the base, which was k delta x, times the height, which was delta x, okay? And that is an important concept that you will need to hang on to. If I give you a graph on the test, of a regular geometric area under a curve, you should know that that's how you're going to find the work done by that force. Okay? Cool. And if you're struggling kind of being clear on what moments what, it wouldn't hurt to draw a picture of the three different moments you're comparing the energies. The goal of the lesson is to learn about conservation of energy, which is the notion that there's this quantity that we can count up, uh, and it's always the same uh, number at all moments in time. And we learn about the different types of energy that exist in nature. Um, gravitational potential energy, which you have up high. Kinetic energy, which you have when you're moving. You can store energy in stretching springs or in lots of other ways. Um, and the bouncy ball lab is about the fact that it looks like we lost some energy when the ball doesn't come back to the height that we dropped it from, but that energy is actually still there. It's just that the ball and the floor are heated up hotter than they were before, and that itself is a form of energy that we have to count. So we're doing pretty good when it comes to understanding what balance is. We've got the first layer down that it has to do with the ability of an object to store elastic potential energy when it collides with the floor. Uh, there's one other important thing going on in a bounce, and that's what we're going to be characterizing in the lab. And in particular, something else kind of fishy is happening, right? When I drop the ball, you guys notice it doesn't rebound to the same height that I dropped it from. And in fact, this phenomenon keeps happening. It never quite comes back to the height that it was initially dropped from. And this is sort of suspicious in the sense that the idea is, in a, in a perfect world, you know, the ball transforms its energy from potential into kinetic, into elastic potential when it's compressed at the ground, back into kinetic, back into gravitational potential. And this should be able to go on forever, yet it appears as if there's some energy missing, because the ball never quite returns to the initial height it was you know, dropped from, which would be what was required to say that you know, we didn't lose any. Yeah. Yeah. So the calculation is how much thermal energy was produced compared to how much energy you started with. That would be that. So do this with me, please, so you know what to do when you make your measurements. This is the analysis overview. So this is what you're going to do with your measurements. All right, pretty quick. So the idea is you're gonna drop the ball from some initial height. I've chosen starting heights for you. If you wanna go rogue and choose around, that's fine with me, but make sure you have at least the same number. So I'm gonna say that the initial height the ball is dropped from is H naught. Okay, and those are you know the starting heights given to you there. I'll tell you, uh, Mr. Stagg, I think every student 
that has or has had Mr. Stagg will say nothing but one of the finest teachers you could ever imagine. Brings physics to life. Brings, uh, shows a connection between the theory of it and how it's applied. He has inspired students. He is, uh, students are walking out of that class saying they want to continue in the area of physics and into all the departments once they get into college. Tremendous teacher and a great, great human being. Oh, it's been great to have Mr. Nazar. Um, I've had some good principals in the past too, but uh, you know, I, I'm glad to have someone where I think I actually have a reasonable chance of expecting him to be here for the next year and the year after that, and, and that continuity is nice because it enables uh, more long-term trajectory changes uh, and you know establishments to take place. So, yeah, uh, I think Mr. Nazar is great. I feel supported by him. Um, there's a scale up here for you to measure the mass of your bouncy balls. You've got meter sticks to measure heights. Um, the lab groups are three, except for one group, because I've got enough bouncy balls to support that, and it's not a four-man job. So you can see, um, mostly going sideways, we've got a group of four here and a group of three here. Okay? So you're welcome to get started. You've got mm, like a little bit more than 10 minutes today, so maybe you can get your data table down and a couple trials in. But we'll be finishing this tomorrow. And the bouncy balls are right up here. No. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. We need the slow motion. I thought it was going to bounce a lot higher up. Like, yeah. Like, I So in my way. <laughs> Potential when it's at the second height after rebounding, and then subtract them. But look at the analysis of everything we did yesterday. You'll see there's a combined expression to so take that difference. Of course, no one's ready for this yet, but I have graph paper up here for you guys when you need it. And the scale is up at the front. Um, what I like best about Mr. Stagg is that. He, he teaches you as a friend as opposed to like just lecturing at you and he takes your questions and he turns them into your answers. Um, Mr. Stagg is a maestro increíble con um, una pasión para la ciencia que uh, no es comparable con cualquier otro. Uh, él hace un buen trabajo no simplemente enseñarnos pero ayudarnos a uh, Elevar nuestra pasión por el sujeto y por todo, la, toda la material. I like to ask a lot of questions, so I try as best I can to avoid just lecturing, and I try and just get the students to sort of arrive to whatever it is I'm trying to explain to them, you know, on their own through sort of a Socratic reasoning, I think is the formal, formal term. Um, so that's how I try and go about my lectures. Of course, I pair that with demonstrations and I'm asking questions about why did this happen, why did that happen, and I'll challenge them if they put forth something that's, you know, not exactly what I was hoping for them to realize. Uh, and then, of course, just reinforcing those discussions with uh, mathematics, uh, mathematical reasoning, and uh, laboratory procedures, which is what science is all about.